Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of Dynamic Unit Tutorial. In this tutorial we will learn how to use the Dynamic Unit with the Dynamic Calculations, how to set up PID controls, how to change the Dynamic Calculation settings, how to collect the data and how to draw the graphs with the collected data. During this tutorial we will use the shaft furnace that we did in the episode 1 and convert it to use the Dynamic Calculations. I already have the project open here, so I will start by deleting the elemental distribution shaft furnace model since we won't be using static calculations anymore. And then I'll try to calculate this with dynamic calculations and see how it goes. So I press this run dynamic calculations over here. I calculate 6 minutes 30 seconds. And then let's see if we have some warnings. Okay, so there is something wrong about the controls that we have made. So I go to the unit and I check in the controls. The other other one finds the correct value, but the other one cannot reach the set point. So if I calculate and see what happens here, so I can see that these two values change all the time and they cannot find the correct value. This is because in the dynamic calculation mode the output sheet is calculated last. So during the calculation of the controls, the control variable change doesn't immediately affect the measured value if the measured value is taken from the output. In this case we can fix the problem by changing the measured value to point to the operation sheet instead of the output sheet. So I get the reference from the operation sheet, O2, uh, percentage. And for this, the same, I get the temperature from the operation sheet, here, enter. And now when I calculate, the controls find the proper values. So as we can see, we can use the static controls also with the dynamic calculations. However, you should be mindful about using the static controls in the dynamic calculation cases. Because sometimes there can be delay between the cause and effect of the control variable and measured variable, for example. Or the controls can affect each other. So in the dynamic case, the static controls don't really find the solutions in those cases so easily. So that's why another alternative that you can use is the PID control. In addition, the static controls are much slower to calculate in general than the PID controls. So if you have a, bi if you have a bigger model that runs dynamically, then whether you use static controls or PID controls, it, will, it can have a big impact to the speed of the calculations. So by default, we are calculating everything with one, one second time step. It can be changed from the dynamic dialog from the calculation menu. However, uh, I will go into that later. So now if we change these two controls to PID controls, and uh, here we have to now insert the P and I parameters at least. And uh, with one second time step, maybe something like this can be good values. And now when I calculate, let's see what happens. Okay, we can see that the controls find the correct value. This might be a little bit too slow in this case, but at this point it is fine. Anyway, in this tutorial, I won't go through any of the PID control theory. So if you want to learn more about how the PID controls work, then I think you can find quite many sources in the internet. So next, let's make a couple of changes to the unit to make it a little bit more dynamic. So now we have the tank sheet here. And uh, we can see that we set everything... Uh, uh, we, we set 100% for the output streams from both of the phases. So if I calculate this, nothing gets stored inside the unit. 
However, I can change this. I, I change the process gas that, okay, 90% goes out per calculation step and 10% go out of the solids. So now if I calculate, then I should be able to see some values here. Yeah. So depending on these numbers, then different amount is stored into the unit during the calculations. We can also change the rate of reactions by changing the operation percentages for each phase. So for example, if I change the solid phase to the participation to 50% per calculation step, then I calculate. Then I can see that we have different composition in the tank for the magnetite and hematite. However, of the 50% that goes to the operation sheet, that still reacts exactly according to the operation sheet. So of all the iron that comes to the solid phase, 1% goes to the magnetite, 99% goes to the hematite. So the composition of the operation is a little bit different than that of a tank. One thing worth noting is that now after we change the rate of reaction to 50%, then more of the magnetite and coal goes to the output and doesn't react inside the unit. That's why our temperature has come to as low as 637. If we look into the operation sheet, the temperature is still 700. And in the controls, we made the control to the operation sheet. So we can, if we want the tank sheet, if we want the tank temperature to be 700, which by the way also goes to the output, to here, then we need to fix this control. So I adjust the measure cell not to the operation, but to the tank. And now when I calculate, then I can see that the PID control adjusts slowly to call feed to find the new value so that the tank temperature becomes 700. An important thing to note is that if the operation for some reason cannot be calculated, then uh, the material that is supposed to go to the operation comes back to the tank and then goes as according to the output sheet or other operations. So for example, in this case, now if I change this back to 100, because this uh, tank composition requires a lot of oxygen suddenly, if I try to calculate now, we can see that it is not calculated correctly. So for some reason, the magnetite amount goes high and the hematite amount goes low. And if I go to the operation, I can see that there is some problem with the oxygen in the operation. And that's why it cannot be calculated now. If you encounter these kind of problems, then one way to manage it is you start from scratch. So you empty the tanks. Press the empty tanks here and then calculate. So now again, it found the correct values. You can also play with the controls or adjust some critical values for the process by hand in those cases. Often the operations work uh, correctly and doesn't encounter, encounter any kind of errors. But in case, if you use the elemental distribution model, you have to make sure that your values for all the elements are positive. Let's check how to change the calculation settings and how to collect data during the calculations next. So all the dynamic calculation related things can be found over here in the toolbar. And the most important is this dynamic calculations menu. I press it and it opens up uh, a new dialog. And here I can find many useful things related to the dynamic calculations. I got the run options. Uh, I got the simulation settings, where one of the important things is the time step. 
then I can empty tanks over here. I got data settings and from here I can add new sheets to the dynamic dialog. For example, if I collect data, I can add data sheet and then collect data here. We can check it later. Then we got something. If we want to randomize some values during calculations, we can add Monte Carlo sheet. If we want to set values during calculation at certain times, we can add schedule sheet. And then if we can, if we want to change values depending on different kind of conditions, then we can add event sheet. Then we have chart settings. So if you collect data to the uh, data sheet, then you can uh, draw a chart and visualize the data. And then we got reporting tools over here. So you can collect data during the calculation and then make a report out of it. About running the dynamic models, if you press run, it will start from the start time defined over here. Now it's zero. So if I run, then it will start from zero. If I press pause, then it will stop running the model. And whenever, if you now press run again, then it will continue from the time where we pause the model. So now it continues the time from there. If you stop the model by pressing the stop button, then it will reset the timer. So now if I run again, then it will reset and starts, uh, start from scratch. You can also use the similar tools over here on the toolbar. So you, if you want to start the calculation or stop or pause, then you don't have to open the dynamic dialog. Let's see how we can collect data uh, next in during the calculations. So we already added uh, the required data sheet over here, and then it created this get sheet over here. And uh, to get data, we need to insert reference just like with the scenario editor. So we go into the into the unit editor and then input feed rate, copy cell reference, and then paste cell reference over here. Feed rate. And uh, then we might want to measure the output rate, so copy cell reference from there, paste cell reference. Tons per hour. And then we can also get the percentages of magnetite and hematite over here. So I can copy also multiple cell references by using the copy cell reference. However, here now, if I have multiple references I want to paste here, I can't use the paste cell reference. I have to use this add cell references button over here. And when I press it, then it will insert the multiple references over here. And here is the magnetite percentage. And here is the hematite percentage. Now let's calculate. And we can see that it collects the data now from these references over here. We can stop the calculation. And then if we want to visualize these, then we can visualize them with the charts. So now we only have one chart over here. If I want another another chart, I just press this add new chart and it will add one below it. Then I go to the edit chart data. And then for the first chart, I just select the, the feed and the output rates. And then for the second chart, I add the magnetite and hematite output percentages. I press OK. And now the values over here are visualized over here. And if I start new calculations and stop, then it will always update these values accordingly. So now the charts will remember uh, what values to visualize from here. Now we can only see some flat lines in the calculations over here. 
But if we want to uh, set some kind of changes during the calculations, for example, for the feed rate, then we can use the set sheet to do that. So let's change the feed rate. Uh, let's get the reference. Paste it here. Feed rate. And then set the values that we want to change. So first, let's keep it at 200. Then change it to 150 and then to 250. Measurement unit, let's put minutes over there. At three minutes we change, six minutes we change, and that's it. Then we can also change the ending time. So we can say that it is now eight minutes. Okay, and then let's see what kind of charts we get. So we run the model, and now we can see that because we have the end time, we have actually this bar going forwards. Okay, so now we got some different results. We can see that we changed the feed rate over here, and then the hematite, production, uh, hematite pellet production level also reached the new set point. And with another change, it also reaches the new set point. We don't see many uh, big differences over here because we have the elemental distribution sheet and we have the controls that adjust the model. So that's why the changes in the output weight percentages of hematite and magnetite are not so big as they are in the feed rates and output rates. So now we have learned how to use the dynamic unit with the dynamic calculations, how to use the PID controls, how to set up the dynamic calculation settings, how to collect data in the data sheets, and how to set values with the set sheets, and also how to visualize the outputs of the simulations. Currently, this simulation is not very dynamic. So for example, uh, in real shaft furnace, probably there might there would be a little bit longer delay between seeing the result of the feed rate change. However, it is a little bit out of the scope of this tutorial, and we will check more about that in the next tutorial. That's it. Thank you for watching.